This video will investigate which of these two items is a threat to national security. Is being a brony a bad thing? Why did some Mini-Me prizes return to sender? Pop Tropica's very rapid response to my video about their products. Why are some game toys so easily broken? A bombing in Sydney, which these days many people may have forgotten. Are these critters the answer to my big spider problem? The TV shows which literally changed my life? Yep, I still watch these today. A childhood hero who is still my hero today. And my very first music album that I purchased when I was a very young boy. And this video I'm going to do live to camera, so you watch me fluff the words. I'm sure I will, I'm always making mistakes. Okay, on to the first little issue and it's a priority one for me. Need to explain this because I know there's some people anxiously waiting for their prizes to arrive. I've had two prizes rejected at the gate out of Sydney. Both these parcels were headed off to the United States of America. And of course these days we know security is of priority and that's probably a good thing because there are mad bombers about. The problem I believe which is causing these parcels to stop going out of Australia is the fact that we've got toys with batteries in them. It seems oh, that batteries in toys are a problem, or just batteries uh, which are coming up on the x-ray. So obviously these are being scanned and it's causing a problem. I come back with little messages like this on the parcels and also an explanation list of why things have been boomeranged back to me. And if I read there, appears to contain a prohibited substance or thing, e.g. dangerous good. So on a toy like this, I've sort of got to go in and now open it up, even though quite a few of these parcels, I've sent a few parcels to the US, have got through without a problem. So what does that tell you about the way they check these parcels? I could take you down to the toy store, I could show you heaps of toys which have got push buttons and batteries already in them. How do you post toys like this around if it's such a problem and they're picked up on the gateways between big countries? And just a reminder to our wondrous authorities, I will point out what would be perceived as a threat if I saw on an x-ray. If I saw a device like this come through, I would say that's a bomb. If I saw a device like this come through, I would say that's a toy. But hey, I'm no expert. The two YouTubers affected by the bounce back parcels are the Blue Engine 1998 and Thomas Modeler. You're going to have to wait a lot longer for your prizes to arrive in the USA. I'm really sorry about this. And while I'm on the topic of prizes being posted out, let me show you the people who are still yet to claim their prizes. Okay, I'm looking at the contest sheet here. Lego Jam Train 567. Going down, Stain 1149A. Jesus Black 14, the Thomas 1984. That was actually a very good year, 1984, that's when I left school. Okay, so here's the deal. I've pinpointed the people who have not claimed a prize. If you don't come back to me uh, within a reasonable amount of time, I'll default you from winning a prize and we will pick some more winners from the people who entered the Mini-Me contest. In fact, I think there's some more entries that I can let win and because um, there were just so many entries. There were some, so many fantastic entries. And the other thing is I just had someone trying to claim a prize from a year ago and they never claimed their prize and they've all of a sudden popped up and said, oh, I won this thing in the Action Thomas contest, blah, blah, blah. Well, the conditions there were you had to contact me within a certain amount of time and that was all prescribed out in the contest when it was put up. I mean people have got to be coming to my channel and seeing what's going on. People who are just fluffing away for a couple of years and then return and realize they've won a prize, well I'm sorry but by that time your claim has fallen away. You cannot then grab the prize like after a year. I mean come on let's be fair. Um, you've got to read the rules as well before you enter a contest. Please, please be fair. I'm not sure how well you'll see this, but this is all that's left of what I had from that big prize pool of things that I showed. What has been very, very popular and asked for so many times, and it was great to see, is the Shake Shake Bridge Set. A fantastic Thomas and Friends playset. In fact, I think it's one of the best. In fact, the Shake Shake Bridge was so asked for, I had to run off and buy some more. What was really disappointing to see in the Mini Me giveaway was there was a little bit of prize fraud going on. I had some YouTubers doing some very, very unkind stuff. They were setting up accounts which looked very similar to people who had won and they were trying to trick me into thinking that they were the winners 
and that's that's actually a crime that's a really really low act to do um, and I'm not stupid I can pinpoint you people out real fast and what's really dumb what was really really stupid is that these people have the hide to give you an address to send the goods to well I'll tell you what I like to be sending the local police and authorities to these addresses and try and work out who was behind this prize fraud and really to me this signals a big change in the Thomas community if we've got people doing this and thinking they're so clever to pull these little stunts it never used to be like this I mean we used to have our little wars and stuff but this is wrong uh, you people should be blocked and completely banned from this site I have had many youtubers contact me and ask me if I'm a brony can somebody please tell me the implications of being a brony is this a good thing or is this some serious trouble I'm in hopefully the guy in the middle of the screen right now is more the sort of person that I am a little while ago I did a review about these Pop Tropica toys where the heads can be swapped and in the review I pointed out there was actually a little bit of a problem with the way the head connects to the body in the fact that it's a playable thing you can swap that head and put it up there and what we found was the heads were very tight uh, the Pop Tropica people contacted me within a day and they addressed the issues that I brought up actually very thankful for their email to me and let's say put it this way they're on top of the problem and they are rectifying it they are certainly aware of the problems that I brought up in the video and what's really important to note here that here is a franchise who were well aware uh, they had a problem they were willing to admit it and they got back to me in record time and I was very impressed by that and what I'm going to try and do is do a follow-up uh, video and we'll do something which is really nice for these people because um, they've shown to me that they certainly do care for the customers and rectified the problems that I had uh, thank you Pop Tropica creators and what's really important is in my review sure I pointed out a problem with the toy but also showed how to rectify this problem and hopefully that's going to help you if you have the problem with this toy in the way the heads connect to the body and just on the subject of toys particularly toys related to game franchises I have lost count of the times that I have to repair my daughter's Sonic toys I mean you can see the problems there um, is this a problem for other people as well and I'm sort of thinking wow these toys are basically um, not designed to be played with the slightest bit of rough play and you end up in all sorts of trouble who else has these problems um, just leave a comment I'd love to hear well I better put up this very basic warning because the next bit we're gonna see some spiders and if you're scared of spiders or have arachnophobia you may want to click away now well what I've got here is one of the little wasp nests that I have all around the house now <laughs> the funny thing with wasps are um, they can give you a mighty sting um, they're very protective of, of the areas that they have where they have their, their hives and these are the things that they, they sort of make um, to lay eggs I mean I'm talking a lot of garbage here because I don't know what I'm talking about of course but what, what wasps are really good for is killing spiders and let's have a look what's inside this and count how many spiders we have as most of you who know my videos I've had a lot of spiders this year in fact it's been I mean, I should be used to it, but I tell you what, I am totally over it. Um, they're falling apart, these little spiders, but we can sort of take the bodies and work out who's who. Um, I don't know. Uh, there's been a lot of rain. Uh, I suppose it's all to do with food. If there's enough food around, you're going to have the spiders. We've had a lot of uh, lizards. The spiders have been in the house. They don't eat flies. I believe they eat lizards. Um, Oh, there's a few spiders in there actually. It's quite a quite an interesting little haul, all different sizes. I think I need more wasps. I think this is what um, this is telling me. It looks like it's just legs here. There's a couple of little babies there, and there's looks like that's part of that. Anyway, let's have a closer look at what I've got here. I wonder who can tell me what species of spider this is. Are they huntsmen? From what it looks like, I've got four of that size spider, and there's also two little tackers there, little babies. Well, I'm certainly no entomologist, and I'm certainly not a rocket scientist, but I'm sure there's going to be someone out there who'll be able to identify these spiders here. We're getting a nice close look of them. And I'll be honest here, they do look like huntsmen to me, but I have not got trained spider eyes. So possibly a very beautiful and natural way to control my spiders is to have more wasps around. But I tell you what, you get stung by a wasp, and you certainly don't forget it for a very long time. 
And if you're wondering why I've got ink on my hands or haven't been breaking into ATMs or stealing money from money boxes, I had a pen explode on me um, before I started making this video and that ink, once it gets into your skin, it's very hard to get out. You know, it's interesting, there can be an event in your life, um, particularly when you're young, that can you can remember for a long time and it can actually leave like an echo on your thoughts as you travel on through life and there was an incident in Sydney which is the city where I live and grew up um, at Woolworths in 1980 in the George Street store there was actually a bomb placed in the toy department there, there was an extortion attempt by someone um, the bomb did go off and I've, I've read into this story a lot um, I sort of, I'm very affected by it as well because I was in town at the time when the bomb threats were being made with Woolworths so I sort of remember that time very well and what was very interesting about the way uh, th this extortioner was caught out was because of a roll of electrical tape what was very tricky about this explosive device was it was placed in the toy department so once the bomb had gone off the components of bomb looked very similar to the blown up toys that's electrical components within the toys the bomber had used the toilets to arm his bomb and on the bomb there was a piece of electrical tape and he would have made it safe before he went to the store he's armed his bomb and he's left this piece of tape at the store later on down the track after the bomb had gone off detectives are looking around a detective went to the toilet they were under a lot of dress because they couldn't tell the bomb parts from the toys he found this piece of electrical tape and luckily he observed that it was an important piece to collect in the end when they started to get close to the person who they thought made the bomb they did an inspection of what he had in his workshop they found a roll of tape and in the end this piece of tape that they found at the Woolworth store in the toilets married perfectly with the roll of tape that the bomber had in his workshop and the bomber was nailed it's funny people often say well the world's really wild and bad today but you know what it's always been like that I've been hugely influenced by some television shows that I grew up with mainly on repeats and that's UFO of course Space 1999 and what I say about this show is the first season uh, I never really got into the second season uh, Captain Scarlet and of course uh, the Thunderbirds I mean that's really <laughs> every morning when I was younger every morning I watch this show religiously um, and it really did have a huge effect on my life but there's another show that I have liked for a long long time and I religiously watch this show even till today I quite often will watch an episode before I go to bed and that's Blake 7 I absolutely love this show it's funny it's got cheesy special effects but boy it's got a great story and it's got fantastic acting and for me the actor who impressed me the most and I absolutely love his voice is the actor named Paul Darrow he's much older now of course but his voice is still there and to me that's what I used to really enjoy was the way he interacted with the crew and the way he spoke absolutely beautiful to listen to and of course many will argue that Blake 7 is really just a story about the character Villa. Uh, is that true? If you're a Blake 7 fan, was it all about Villa? Well just a little while back I was talking about the Woolworth store which was bombed in Sydney. A toy that I purchased at that store was the toy you see in front of you. It's a Corgi toy, it's made in Great Britain. And from what I believe this toy is a very rare toy these days. It's the deep space vehicle from Blake 7 and it's called the Liberator. Oh yes I purchased this in 1980 but it struck the BBC 1977. From my understanding there was also a white version of this toy but from what I can read the metallic blue one is the very rare one. I'm not sure how rare the plastic kit of this spacecraft is maybe the audience will know. And from memory I purchased these patches many many years ago from a place called the Galaxy Bookshop but I'm not sure whether the Galaxy Bookshop is there anymore. The person you see on screen there now is a person who was my hero when I was 12 and 13 years old. In fact, he's still my hero today. I think it's very healthy to have heroes and very unhealthy to have none. And if I look on the back cover, we can see how Ace looks today. He always looks cool. He's a true rock star. If you're all interested in Kiss, this is an absolute must read book. I have got to say, I learned a lot about Kiss uh, from this book especially I love the story that Ace tells about that transformation from being a struggling artist trying to get noticed to becoming mega famous it's a fantastic insight into the way his life changed very very fast it's a great read into the person Ace Frehley 
and there's some great pictures in this book as well I've been made over the years and there's an insight into the person called Gene Simmons which is a tad scary as well if you're a KISS fan absolute must read and while we're talking about the American rock band KISS let's have a trip back in time there's the makeup kit and of course I wore makeup at the Sydney concert in 1980 wow the memories <laughs> the smell the smell brings back some memories of the makeup in here um, Oh, I think I went, or oh, I know I went, <clears throat> as Ace Freely. And of course in this book, you're given some details on how to make yourself up as whatever character you desire. And of course when they came to Sydney, Peter Chris had left the band, Eric Carr was in there. And that's the person who I went as, Ace Freely, lead guitar. Now I'm sort of tempted to do something very scary and dress myself up and put on makeup again. Does the makeup still work? Oh, oh, I could be the spaceman again. Well, down on the table is the very first Kiss album that I purchased. Uh, probably about 1978, 79. It's Alive 2. And I think when you're young and you see an image like this, how could you not be impressed? And if I move on from Alive 2 and I show you the album that I like the most and it's going to shock a lot of you. Yep, I was one of those Kiss fans that loved The Elder. And sadly, it's an album that you rarely hear songs pulled off and play live. And if we move on from KISS and look at some other bands of the time that I enjoyed and I went to see live, yes, Devo. I love Devo. I love them today. And if you watch Yo Gabba Gabba, you will notice that the artist keeps drawing potatoes. Now, there's a relationship between that artist and this band. As I was growing older, my musical tastes were maturing. I used to buy an album a week for quite a few years. I've got a lot of them. This is just a small sample. That's Led Zeppelin's live album. The song remains the same. Led Zeppelin's Physical Graffiti, which was a double album. One of Jimmy Page's solo albums. Whenever Jimmy Page uh, did anything solo, I always grabbed it. Unfortunately, there's few and far between. Uh, another artist I loved was Pete Townsend. I loved his solo stuff. I wasn't that much into The Who, but I loved Pete Townsend. Anything he did solo work. That was another Pete Townsend uh, album. Empty Glass, some people classify that as one of the all-time classics, uh, I certainly do. And I mean, you can't not buy these two, Rubber Soul and Revolver. They are absolute must-haves. Well, this video has dragged on far too long. You've put up my ugly mug and heard my Australian accent for far too long. Thanks for watching and see you next time.